Coming up on Unpeeled, this former president is making his way into the shoe industry. A film production company is in some hot water over music rights. This superhero movie slings to the bottom of the box office during its opening weekend. And let your freak flag fly as Shrek is coming to Utica. All that and more Unpeeled starts right now. Welcome to a brand new episode of Unpeeled, I'm Kaylee Decina. And I'm Charlie Goldberg, now for an update on an iconic rock band's return to the movie screen. That's right, Beatles fans are sure to be twisting and shouting as British director Sam Mendes recently signed on to direct four biopics about each member of the Beatles. This comes after Apple Corps, Paul McCartney, Ringo Starr and the families of the deceased members gave full rights to their life stories and music. Mendez is known for his documentarian success in the 1917 movie, as well as for his work in the James Bond series. He is, quote, excited to challenge the notion of what constitutes a trip to the movies. Sony Pictures Entertainment is scheduled to release the films in 2027. Kaylee, 2027, a long time coming away. We have a little bit. However, it's still very exciting. Biopics are an upwards trend right now. The public loves them, and it's about time the Beatles get a film of their own. I couldn't agree more. I mean, we have so many good ones. Bohemian Rhapsody, Elvis, we have Michael Jackson's movie coming out in 2025. But the Beatles, I mean, this is so exciting. Not one, but four. And I love biopics. I feel like they just show us that side of these stars and historical figures that we haven't gotten to see that behind the scenes. So I'm really Really excited. Me as well, but there are challenges here. Yeah. Now there is four different films being made with the same plot line, same characters, just different perspectives. There could be some issues with fan engagement. Yeah, I mean, I can't help but wonder how they're going to make them so different and how much information from individual perspectives they're having to gather. But I'm sure it's going to be amazing. I'm kind of curious if people are going to see all four or just pick and choose. Well, if people have a favorite Beatle, they're definitely going to pick one over the other. Probably. But we'll wait till 2027 we to have, We have a little bit, as we said. <laughs> in other news, former President Donald Trump is expanding his business into the shoe industry. In a surprise appearance at SneakerCon, Trump unveiled the new Never Surrender High Tops for almost $400. The launch of the sneakers comes a day after a judge in New York ordered Trump to pay $355 million in penalties for fraud and another $85 million in a defamation lawsuit, now totaling almost half a billion dollars. Outer Banks actor Austin North was arrested last week after allegedly assaulting medical staff at a hospital in Las Vegas. According to the police, North was charged with three counts of battery on a, pro on a protected person and the hearing is scheduled for March 19th. In a statement, North said he does not remember the events at the hospital and has struggled with panic attacks and anxiety for years. He apologized for his actions, saying, quote, I have the utmost respect for healthcare workers and hospital staff. I mean, this is really, really sad to see. Obviously, violence is never okay, but it does seem like there's more to the story here than the original headline is giving off. I mean, I think it's really easy to judge, but clearly he was going through a very serious mental health crisis. So I also think it's really important that he's opening up the conversation and can change how people view mental health. It is important to start talking about anxiety and mental health, but it's also important to realize that people were hurt in this situation. Let's just hope all for the best for the people who were hurt and that this never happens again. Completely agree. In other news, the British Academy of Film and Television Arts Awards took place on Sunday night. Oppenheimer won seven awards, followed by Poor Things, which won five, and Emma Stone won Best Actress. The Rising Star Award was one of the most competitive of the night. Actors such as Iowa Debri and Jacob Elordi were nominated, but actress Mia Makina Bruce ended up taking home the award. Many critics predict that the winners are likely to receive an Oscar on March 10th. And Billie Eilish sparked controversy at this year's People's Choice Awards. While being filmed, Eilish unapprovingly said, quote, there's so many TikTokers here to fellow singer Kylie Minogue. After noticing the cameras were on her, Eilish covered her mouth, attempting to block the rest of the conversation. Viewers took to TikTok and X to agree with Eilish, while TikTok star Bryce Hall used his platform to sarcastically apologize to Eilish. In the video, he said that he was sorry for not acknowledging her greatness or bowing down to her. He even, waked up, he even wiped up a fake tear from his face. He voiced that she should direct her anger at an award show that isn't involving TikTokers. Yeah. Now I'm looking at this story. 
And well, I'm seeing two different worlds. I'm seeing a world on an app with TikTok, and I'm seeing a mainstream world. I could see the confusion. I could see the confusion. And listen, I see how celebrities might not be super ecstatic about these TikTokers being at these award shows, but we can't ignore the fact that TikTok has grown tremendously. So many people have grown platforms and gained followings, and ultimately, they're there for a reason. They were invited. So whether it's to increase younger viewership or just mix things up, I'm not sure. Absolutely, and this is new. It's unprecedented. Yeah. There's a major influx. Of tick doctors coming to a big mainstream event, I think that Eilish was more, you know, confused rather than being concerned. Hall just took things to heart. I mean, completely. She didn't even mean to get heard saying this, so she's probably pretty surprised at the drama that's erupted from it. I know that he's had not one but two posts about the incident, so he's definitely taking it hope kind of the wrong way. <laughs> yeah, nobody could have a private moment anymore, Kaylee. <laughs> Well, this is certainly not going to be private. After the break, we're discussing how Whitney Houston's biopic has run into legal trouble. And we may be witnessing the return of live TV. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back on Peelers. Welcome back to Unpeeled. The Whitney Houston I Wanna Dance With Somebody biopic graced our screens in December of 2022, but the usage of Houston's music in the film was stirred up by some controversy. Here to discuss the new lawsuit between Sony Music and the producers of the film is our industry reporter, Riley Lucetta. Riley, it's an honor to be sharing the desk with you. Thank you for having me. All right, now let's talk about this lawsuit. Give me the full breakdown of what happened. So on Thursday, Sony Music conducted a lawsuit against the production team of the Whitney Houston biopic. Now these three production companies were um, Anthem Films, Black Label Media, and Naibo Productions. Now this lawsuit came to be because um, 20 of the songs utilized in the film were never licensed properly or paid for. Now music is obviously a huge part of this film due to Houston's phenomenal career and it's crazy that it was never paid for correctly. Yeah, you would think that you know in a big movie business people would realize that they need to pay for things. Anyway, let's talk about the timeline of this lawsuit. Give me the real rundown. Yes, so the film came out in 2022, and in August and October of 2023, Sony reached out to the production team about how they have not conducted a payment. Now, Anthem Films came forward and said that they were planning on it, but two years later, down the line, nothing has changed. Now, Sony Music Production legal representative said, it is clear that there is no license or authorization to use some recordings used in this film. Now, this is obviously a huge issue and Sony has lost a lot of money due to this issue. And I'm sure that the producers at Sony weren't too thrilled. Did they comment on what's going on? Yes. So, Black Label Media came forward and mentioned that they were upset that they were even 
talked about in this lawsuit whatsoever. And this was because they see themselves as an investor of the film and not a producer. Now, Sony Music has not made any public statement about this and neither has the other two production companies. Wow, well, it seems like a mess, but hey, Winnie Houston's still great. Exactly. Anyway, we're moving on things to Kaylee now. Thanks, Riley. Nowadays, more and more people are cutting their cable cords and watching shows through streaming services. But another form of TV is reestablishing its presence thanks to streaming. Our TV reporter Ben Dietrich explains why live television isn't going anywhere. Thanks, Kaylee. Throughout the last 10 years or so, the TV industry has shifted a certain direction. And that direction is towards streaming services. Whether it's due to the lower overall cost of subscriptions compared to cable, or the more convenient method of watching what you want, when you want, the streaming takeover is real. But in an ironic twist, the increase in streaming is bringing a more traditional form of television back to the limelight, live TV. This year's Super Bowl was the most watched event in the United States since the moon landing, with over 120 million people glued to the TV, watching it live with friends and family, whether it was for The Game, for Taylor Swift, for Usher, or even for Spongebob. Aside from CBS and Nickelodeon, Paramount Plus made it possible for digital viewers to watch the game. And last week, The Daily Show with Jon Stewart drew close to 2 million viewers, the most for the show in six years. Not to mention the Oscars are coming up in a few weeks, and that will undoubtedly attract millions of viewers as well. Simply put, we are witnessing a live TV renaissance. Streaming services have realized that there isn't anything quite like catching something in real time. Whether it's getting together with your friends and family and watching a season premiere of a show you all love, or maybe even catching a brand new episode of Unpeeled, these are moments that can never be forgotten. And because of this, streaming services have begun to take advantage of live TV. Hulu, Apple TV+, Plus, Peacock, and many more are now streaming live sporting events. Max has a live CNN feed for news, Netflix hosted the Screen Actors Guild Awards, and the Oscars will be available on Hulu and YouTube TV this year. Streaming services are still the in thing right now, but many are starting to shift their interest towards live TV, which may very well be in a comeback season. But Kaylee, I'm hearing it's not so good news for Xbox. Is that true? Well, when we return, we're learning how a superpower in the esports world might soon be off the market. And Madam Webb needs a hero to save it in the box office. Stay with us on Peelers. We'll be right back. They call me Maxi, but I prefer tripod. I was your above average four-legged homie and then wham, bam, minivan. Some people pity me. Now that's lame. I still run, fetch, and swim. And the ladies love me. I'm the ultimate wingman. Just don't ask me to high five. Welcome back, Unpeelers. Since its arrival, Xbox has been one of the most dominant gaming consoles in the world. However, that might all be changing. Here to tell us why is our eSports reporter, Drew Alba. Thanks, Charlie. Back before I spent all my free time talking in front of a camera, I played a game known as Sea of Thieves, which was published by Microsoft. So naturally, I became a fan and owned the Xbox, a Microsoft video game console. 
in a similar way that you can only play Mario on Nintendo or Spider-Man on a PlayStation, the only way to play Sea of Thieves is on an Xbox. Or it was the only way until last week. Microsoft announced they are beginning to do away with Xbox exclusive games, stating that four games with more to come will be available across all consoles. With the move to get rid of game exclusivity, the Seattle-based company is sending the message of prioritizing franchises over hardware. It used to be that Microsoft would release exclusive games in order to drive up console sales, but now the contrary is happening. With game exclusivity becoming a thing of the past, Microsoft is emphasizing the importance of their game franchises, reaching the largest group of people possible. For example, an Xbox exclusive game like Halo Infinite, which was released in 2021, has lost two thirds of its player base due to a dramatic decrease of gamers who now own an Xbox. In fact, as of 2023, over 70% of all gamers own a PlayStation, and by allowing a game like Halo to be pur purchased on all consoles, Microsoft is expanding the reach of players Halo can tap into. Microsoft's new agenda is to grow brands, not hardware. And although Microsoft still plans on releasing a new console in 2024, if trend continues, Xbox may be a thing of the past sooner than you think. And Microsoft seems to be content with that. Kaylee, over to you. Thank you. And last week, Sony's long-awaited Madam Web hit the box office, and let's just say even Miss Webb herself isn't a fan. Here to tell us why Dakota Johnson hates her latest movie is our pop culture reporter, Julia Bosses. Julia, thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited to chat with you. It's so great to be here, Kaylee. Thank okay, you. Okay, so please tell us, how was the first week in the box office? <laughs> so during opening weekend, the film absolutely tanked, um, bringing in only $25 million domestically, with The Hollywood Reporter calling it one of the worst openings for a Sony movie featuring Spider-Man related characters of all time. Now, this really follows a trend of underperforming superhero movies that were released by Marvel and DC in the recent years, and it's not doing so great with critics either, with a 13% Critics' Choice score on Rotten Tomatoes. That is not great. Well, it seems like the movie star isn't doing the film any favors. Can you tell us more? That's right. So Dakota Johnson, who plays Madam Web herself, is not quite selling the movie during the press tour. In an interview with Magic FM, she said that she will not be watching the film as an act of self-care. She also went on to say that she was skeptical about signing on to the project in the first place and that the script went through drastic changes um, since she signed on. So let's take a look. I'm really curious, like, how much did this change from start to finish? Like, from what you read and you signed on from Adam Webb to what we see on screen? There were drastic changes. <laughs> and I can't even tell well, you what they were. That is certainly interesting. Okay, well, how have fans been reacting to the press tour? Yeah, so on TikTok and all over social media has been exploding with fan reactions to not only the movie itself, but also the press tour. Countless memes and impersonations of Johnson have been going viral, as well as some not so favorable fan reviews of the film, with some even going on to say it's one of the worst movies ever made. <laughs> That's really, really rough. Okay, thank you so much, Julia. Thank you. And when we return, we're singing Viva Las Vegas as the city becomes a sports capital. All that and more in just two minutes. Sadie Miller. My name is Luke Brady. Uh, I go by St. Luke. So this one I started with this guitar lick. Welcome to my house. Lately, not my happy place. Everybody's pretty tired of each other. The parents were not themselves. 
My little brothers were morphing into small creatures. The walls were closing in. Clearly a case of too much family, too close, 24 seven. And there's a lot of that going around right now. If this sounds like your house, try going someplace new. Yourlifeyourvoice.org. You'll find lots of ideas to help you handle the family stresses of being confined to close quarters. Yourlifeyourvoice.org. It might not get you out of the house, but it could help you find a little more breathing room. Welcome back to Unpeeled. Cities like New York, Los Angeles, and Miami have run the sports world for years. But one city that quickly has entered into the fray is Las Vegas. Here to explain how the entertainment capital of the world got its name is our sports reporter, Nathaniel Cunningham. Thanks, Charlie. Just over a week and a half ago, we saw Super Bowl 58 get hosted in Las Vegas. The city has been one of the most infamous in the world, but not always for the best of reasons. Most people call it the Sin City, or the gambling capital of the U.S., but in recent years, that concept's changed. Prior to 2016, Las Vegas was home to just four professional semi, professional or semi poor, poor pro sports teams. Now in 2024, that number has jumped to 23. It all started back in 2017 when the NHL decided to add an expansion team called the Vegas Golden Knights. Most expansion teams in any sport fail to see immediate success, but the Knights reached the Stanley Cup Finals in their first season. As a result, teams started to flock to the newfound sports capital. In 2018, the then San Antonio Stars became the Las Vegas Aces. Fitting, right? Two years later, the Oakland Raiders chose to move south, calling themselves the Vegas Raiders, and this completed the trifecta of basketball, football, and hockey. With three major sports teams calling Vegas home, the city started to pick up traction, but no major sports championships had resulted until 2022. That all changed. The Aces won the WNBA Finals and would win again in 2023. The Golden Knights would win their first Stanley Cup in that same season. One of the biggest sports in the world, Formula One, announced it would have a race in Vegas at the end of the year, and then the NFL announced that Vegas would host Super Bowl 58. All the success within a decade saw Vegas bloom to what it is today, and now, in just four years, we could see the city at its first first MLB team as the Oakland Athletics put in a bid to become the Las Vegas Athletics in 2028. Whether you dislike the city for its questionable past or you appraise it for its economic impact, one thing is certain. With the soon to be fourth major sports team, Las Vegas has truly become the entertainment capital of the world. With so many incredible sports in one city, I figured I'd take a trip. But Kaylee, I got a flight to catch. Oh, I hope you catch your flight, Nathaniel. <laughs> Thanks so much. And it's a big, bright, and beautiful world because Shrek the Musical is on tour. Everyone's favorite big green monster will be visiting central New York. Here to tell you everything you need to know from the background of the musical to how to buy tickets are Broadway and Syracuse events reporters Charlene Nomini and Tegan Brostrom. Guys, it's so great to have you here. I can't wait to hear everything about Shrek the Musical. Okay, Charlene, first for you. Can you tell me a bit about Shrek the Musical? Of course. Well, Shrek the Musical has actually been revived for the first time since its first national tour. So it's going to be all new choreography and all new direction from a brand new director. And obviously, it's based on the original DreamWorks musical released in 2001 and was adapted into a musical only seven years after it first came out, which just shows you how insanely popular the original movie was. It first premiered in Seattle and then tr got transferred to Broadway less than a year after its premiere, racking in 20 awards nominations, including Tony's and Drama Desk Awards. Wow, okay, so Shrek is clearly a really amazing musical, but can you both tell me where can we get tickets to see it this time around? Of course. Um, Shrek the Musical on tour will be in Utica from the 24th to the 25th, and tickets are available on the Shrek the Musical tour website. Okay. 
Okay. They'll also be available on BroadwayUtica.org, and I think we can all agree that we're really excited to see this childhood classic on stage again. I love that. And Tian, are there any other events for people who can't make it to the musical? There are, and one of those events is traveling around America right now, and that's the Shrek Rave. It'll be stopping by in Albany on March 16th, and this event features DJs and live performances all themed to Shrek and the movies and songs. Swamp water will be served, <laughs> and all are encouraged to dress up in their favorite Shrek attire. So all of us here at Unpeeled and all over the world are excited to have all these Shrek events happening. Wow, I think I'll have to do a field trip. Okay, thank you guys so much, and good luck, Charlie. May have been off the air for years, but one star has had an astronomical rise to success. You won't want to miss it. Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzzed warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! I see you mobbing over her. Let's go. Let's mob. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, let's crawl. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, let's crawl. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hey, yo, we mobbing. Come on, girl. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey, yo, let's crawl. Hey, yo, let's crawl. Hey, let's crawl. Hey, yo, let's crawl. Boom. From child actor to CEO, this Good Luck Charlie star has done it all. Bridget Medler announced on Monday that she is now the CEO of the startup company Northwood Space. The company has already received $6.3 million in initial funding. On the same day, Medler also announced that the social media platform X, she is a mother. She adopted her now four-year-old son in 2022 and said, quote, being a parent is the biggest gift and the most defining experience there is. Now, you know, you see these childhood stars come into their shows when they're kids and mm -hmm. kind of be stuck in this vortex where they can't really get out of the childhood fame. However, it's great to see that Mendler is not only surviving, but thriving out of the oh, vortex. thriving. She can do it all. And let me just say about her being a mother, she was such a good sister to Charlie on Good Look Charlie. So I know she must have learned some amazing parenting from Amy Duncan on the set, and she knows what she's doing. But just speaking to about Bridget as a role model, I mean, I've never seen really a Disney star or a child star take this route, you know, get her further education and, I mean, being a CEO and working with space, she's incredible. Yeah, people thought she, you know, fell off the grid, but not only was she off the grid, she was grinding oh, yeah. off the grid. And yeah. now she's in this <laughs> huge position and, you know, we couldn't be happier for her because I know she's watching Unpeeled 100% right she now. She probably, she's right here with us right now. Oh yeah, absolutely. But she is amazing. I mean, I loved Good Look Charlie. I loved her role, this is a little more niche, her role on Wizards of Waverly Place as Juliet the Vampire. Do you remember that? Justin's, Justin's, Justin's girlfriend, girlfriend right? his vampire yeah. girlfriend. That had me sobbing. When she that turned her real age, do you remember that? What was her real age? Like thousands of years old because she's a vampire. That's not pot. Thousands. She's in look a day over like 30. I mean, she thousands? looks good here, but this clearly wasn't from the episode that I'm referring to. <laughs> she's not thousands of years old. No, she's not thousands of years old. And her role in Lemonade Mouth? I mean, I mean, there's a reason that movie they make it to theaters, Kaylee. Charlie. Not, not a fan. Charlie. I'm it sour on Lemonade Mouth. Disney I'm sorry. Channel. Sour on Lemonade Mouth. You don't like to terminate. You don't like she's so gone. No. Wow. Okay. Well, I think Charlie might be on his own here at Unpeeled for not liking Lemonade Mouth. Yeah, I'm gonna need some good luck, huh? Yeah. Oh, good. Good luck, Charlie. Good luck, Charlie. Well, <laughs> what else about Bridget? Well, oh, I know. Ready or not, and Hurricane. Her two hits. 
Do you know the ready or not? Here Absolutely I not. Okay. Well, I actually still listen to those. Well, those aren't bangers, but I'll tell you what are bangers. They didn't make it to the radio either. <laughs> Anyway, okay, unfortunately that is all the time we have with you tonight. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure to follow us on all our socials at Citrus TV on X and at Unpeeled underscore Syracuse on Instagram. I'm Charlie Goldberg. And I'm Kaylee Decina. Good luck, Charlie, and stay classy, Syracuse. <laughs>